much for taking your time to talk to me today. And I'm really excited that it's you today because you've experienced quite a lot of yeah, stuff in your career, like from your photography projects to your kimono business. It's something like not everybody does. So I'm really excited to talk about your journey. And yeah, maybe for the people who don't know you yet, uh, would you mind like introducing yourself, telling something about yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, shortly. <laughs> uh, my name is Stasia. I'm originally from Poland. Um, I've been living in Japan since 2012, so it's going to be 10 years. Um, yeah, at the moment I'm running my own business. I do uh, kimono styling and photography. Um, yeah, it would be about it. <laughs> yeah. Now that you are set up your business, like how did that come about? Were you already planning to have a business like when you were younger? Uh, do, you, do you already like have an idea that someday you want to have something of your own? Not really. I mean, I think it's kind of difficult, I would say, to, you know, start with that idea that, yeah, one day I'm going to have my own business. It's not something that you think about too much I think especially since no one around me you know had their own business yeah it was always working for someone so that seemed natural to me yeah in my case it was a process what I know for sure okay yeah. <laughs> is that I don't want to work for someone I don't like having a boss I don't like having a manager I don't like having someone telling me what to do how to do uh, let's say you know when there are dis disagreements I think that this way is better and I think this way is going to work well but someone says well no you don't know anything that's not going to work then you know for me it's kind of like hmm okay <laughs> you just wait you'll see that my idea was better yeah so <laughs> it happened so many times you know when I, I used to work just at a regular company let's say with a boss with a manager yeah so I always was thinking yeah no I I'm not enjoying this I'm not liking this so the longest I ever stayed at a regular company was three years mm -hmm. that's it that's my longest experience experience um but yeah it was a process you know those things don't happen just overnight yeah uh, you need to set up a lot of things you need to have an idea I mean it also depends on what kind of person you are I think um you know everyone has a different personality and when it comes to me I like having a plan hmm. I need to have everything planned let's say I have a plan for this year. This is what I want to achieve. This is how I'm going to do it step by step. Nothing is spontaneous. So this is how I am and this is how I do things and this is how it happened. So I had a plan. I wanted, I had an idea. I had um, this, let's say, vision that I wanted to achieve and I worked towards achieving that. Yeah, so it took many years so it's not only one thing it's not only let's say my kimono school it's not only photography yeah it's studying Japanese yeah to be fluent it's many many things okay also let's say like paperwork and stuff but that's like boring <laughs> all the boring things but they are important okay yeah. so you, you know for people also need to remember that business is also about doing all those things that are not really exciting uh, <laughs> yeah so yeah yeah like I said yeah I had a plan I had a vision um, what was your vision in exact like in particular yeah I mean once I had an idea about what I wanted to do. I wanted to combine kimono and photography. So I would write down a lot of ideas. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. And of course, a lot of things changed, yes? Because I, I have to know how it works. You won't know unless you try, right? Yeah. So once I figured it out, then I knew for sure I had to quit my full-time job. I wanted to do this full-time. Um, and then naturally, I started thinking about having a proper place to do that, you know. So, of course, I needed a studio and so on and so on. Yeah, it was a long process, but this is more or less how it happened. And 
yeah how I am where I am right now yeah really cool and I think not many people in our age I would say have their own business it's a lot of responsibility so yes <laughs> <laughs> although I, I'm not sure I mean you know I'm I'm not sure if you know how old I am <laughs> I'm, I'm 32 this year okay. so. so we are quite the same age <laughs> oh, okay okay it's not like really young but I guess not old <laughs> yeah yeah. Uh, yeah I started full-time at the end of 2018 so I was 28 mm. I see okay you know if you think about it that's that's fairly young yeah, yeah. Okay. and when you like think back like deciding that you want to do something on your own like not having a boss um mm -hmm. when you just had the idea so I think I want to start it like for real what were like your fears and hopes and thinking back like what of the hopes and like which hopes which fears did come true and which like turned out quite differently for from what mm -hmm. you expected to it to be mm -hmm. I mean the big, biggest fear of course is that I will not get any bookings and then it just didn't make any sense like you know I quit my job I was risking a lot right because um to be in Japan we need a visa right so uh once you quit your job and you switch to let's say I don't know self-sponsorship or business or something like that it's really stressful so that was definitely the biggest fear well hope Obviously, I was hoping that um, my business will grow, that I can continue, yeah, that I can do it full time. I didn't jump straight into full time, actually. I had to make a name for myself. You know, it. how do I say? You know, I don't want to make it sound serious because, I mean, obviously, it's not like I'm a huge brand or anything, but... I, I needed people to know what my idea is or what it is that I'm doing, yes? Yeah? So for a few months, I think it was about half a year. Yeah, yeah, I think almost half a year. I would do shoots uh, twice a day <laughs> on my days off. And oh. then my other, well, other days, yeah, I would work five days a week. And then I had two days off. And on those two days off, I had shoots twice a day yeah so for about half a year I didn't really have a day off but those things are necessary yeah when you're trying to establish something for for yourself yeah so like I said I didn't jump straight into full-time um but once I decided I want to then well obviously my biggest fear was that you know it wouldn't last I just wanted it to last for a long time yeah I mean it's going okay I guess <laughs> it's okay. going fine yeah. yeah it's going fine so yeah. no I think it's like quite amazing what you have established for yourself even like you're posting about the kimono and you're teaching it to people who don't know about it yet so it's like really valuable I think you do so um, um yeah I hope <laughs> people find it interesting so thank you um when you think back like how did your education help in your career like what did you have to learn for yourself like by experience by experience because I think we like even like starting a business or having creative work you have to like learn a lot by yourself something that isn't taught at school how was it for you my education you mean at what level like university for example yeah university and maybe like you also learned how to um style kimonos you learned mm -hmm. about it so oh, i see, see, see. everything well, you know. when it comes to my university education it's not really connected <laughs> yes and no i mean um i studied asia pacific studies and like asian cultural studies so my main focus was Japan, obviously. So let's say I have some background, okay? Like history. I know the history of Japan. I know more or less, well, culture, okay? So I have that. But specifically to do this job, university education is not really connected that much, yeah? Yeah, I, I went to kimono school, yeah? I'm... At the end, actually, next month, I'm going to graduate finally <laughs> after five years. It's time. So I learned about kimono. Well, you start with basics, yeah, how to dress yourself. 
and then well depends on the level yeah you're doing but in my case uh i have a professional license so i have all the theory we studied really a lot of details technical details like types of weaving or something that really detail things life cycle of a silkworm um and so on and so on different fabrics different techniques so i have that knowledge i can explain it well and um yeah well that's very obviously you know connected to what i'm doing right now because i don't only do kimono styling and photography i also give a brief explanation i can go into detail but that takes hours i can literally talk for hours yeah i try to keep it around 40 minutes usually but it's very compact but you and you so after we finish, you know, the photo shoot, let's say that at the end of the day, you are richer in knowledge. Yes. Yeah? So you understand how it works. You know what you were wearing, you know what kind of kimono it is, how it works and so on. When it comes to photography, though, I'm completely self-taught. Completely. So I have no theory whatsoever. Nothing, honestly. And I'm very honest about it, like, I don't yeah I don't know it's just my eyes like how I see things I see this this is good I like it that's it yeah so I never studied any like photography theory um so I had to learn all that by myself well obviously how to use my camera <laughs> at first yes um that's also something that you had I had to practice yeah I had to master that but I mean, once I knew, I, I really knew, yeah, what to do. Um, there's other things that I use for work, like editing. Yeah. You know, nobody teaches you how to operate, you know, Lightroom or Photoshop. Yeah, you. I learned it by myself, yes. I would say I'm pretty good at it at the moment. Mm -hmm. But nobody taught me that, yes. And it's not something that you really learn at school unless you choose it yeah unless you choose let's say like photography whatever major or something but you see me without having that formal education I call myself a photographer yeah. I have no problems with that yeah that's amazing because many people maybe have like even like problems saying it like because you haven't taught it at school so you don't have a diploma for it so people are afraid yeah, to yeah. use the term photography I used to be like that I used to be like that but it change I know I'm good <laughs> I know how it sounds okay no it sounds great it's I awesome. know I'm good <laughs> yeah. I'm good at editing. I'm good at photography. I don't need to have like a super expensive equipment. I know how to use my equipment to the max. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I enjoy what I do. I like what I do. I have a style. I think if you see a photo, like a portrait photo of someone in kimono, you know it was taken by me. I, and this is what I wanted for myself, actually, yeah. But honestly, at the beginning, I was like, oh, well, I don't have like a paper to prove my, my qualifications or something. I do have a paper to prove my kimono qualifications. So, <laughs> But it's not always about that, yeah. yeah. It's about your skills, yeah. And I, yeah, I, I am pretty confident in my photography skills. So. That's amazing. Like, I really love that you said it. Uh, because it's <laughs> to be honest, yeah, not only oh, like I being... to say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's really amazing. I and... know how it sounds though, so. Okay. <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> and now that you are mentioned it, like you've been successful, or it seems like you've been successful with everything you've done. So were there any projects that you had to abandon or that you thought that, like, I have to give up? It's mostly about the lack of time mm -hmm. to do everything that I want to do. There's a lot of things that I want to do that I, I have those ideas. Um, but yeah, time is the biggest problem because I'm only one person yeah. doing everything. Yeah. And People usually don't realize how much time I spend working. It's not only, I don't know, you know, you come into my studio, I dress you, I take photos of you. Oh, I finished. Yeah. No, 
<laughs> yes, even only that is about five, six hours, yes. But there's many hours before, like things I prepare, there's many hours after. And especially, you know, since I'm I'm just one person, um, it really takes a lot of time. So there are many things, you know, like my photography project uh, you mentioned at the beginning. Yeah, I did the uh, like tattoo portrait um, project. I wish I could continue, mm -hmm. but first things first. And my kimono work. Well, it's my brand, yes. I cannot say it's a, my company because I'm just one person, yes. Um, but it's the most important thing for me. So obviously, this is what I want to and have to focus on. But yeah, many other things I want to do. Um, yeah, just my personal photography projects or... Um, I had this idea from it was last year I think or was it 2020 I don't remember but I still want to do it it's just a problem of time yes I want to um, start maybe like a plus size kimono wow. line yeah because um, this is the reason why I went to uh, wasai school mm -hmm. so like um, kimono making school yes to make a real authentic proper plus size kimono that was my goal yeah and i know how to do it i made it yeah i designed it it's just time yeah yeah so there's so many things i want to do but yeah first things first <laughs> yeah. that's amazing like i've never even thought about it that, that those might not exist like do those exist or is it like really a, um, not a lot not a lot uh -huh. Plus size kimono kind of exists, but usually it's a, like a two-piece thing. So like a skirt and like a top or just made using like regular fabric and not kimono fabric. Because kimono fabric has its limitations when it comes to width, yes? So I didn't want that. Or sometimes, yeah, there is also a type of kimono that is, let's say, a bit wider in a certain spot, yes. But I didn't want that. I wanted a proper shape of kimono, same as everybody else has, yes. So I um, used two rolls of fabric, but real authentic rolls of fabric for yukata, actually. I made a yukata, but it's more or less same like the process of making both is, is very similar so oh actually yeah this is something I wanted to mention when you asked um about like how education helped me yeah. in my work so although I did five years of kimono school yes there is no practice whatsoever on a variety of uh, body types we just have one mannequin, you know, it's assumed that everybody is one size and no, you know, <laughs> people are different. There are tall people, sometimes very, very petite people, you know, um, we have like plus size, different things, you know. So I, until now, I had such a variety of clients. So I had to perfect those techniques you know by myself but I figured it out because I am not scared of it I would say that a lot of people are taken aback a bit like oh how am I going to do this like this kimono is a bit small like how will I manage you can you need to figure it out yes and I have it fig figured out but it came with practice I, I really had to figure things out. But now that I have, I know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, but those things, yeah, they are not taught. Um, yeah. Which is too bad because people are not free size or like one size fits all. Yeah. Everyone is different. So, yeah, I would say I had to do that by myself. But that's actually a strong point, I would say, of my service. Because, you know, I don't freak out like, oh, you're so tall. What will I do? I'm fine. I can do anything. We're good. Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just kind of started answering no, the other question. No, it's really cool that you mentioned it. And I think it's also like makes the people who your clients um, feel comfortable that they still can wear it, that they, they don't have to worry absolutely. about it. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. I will never say anything like, 
oh, you're, you're too big for kimono, you're too tall for kimono, your arms are too long for kimono. And this is, those are things that I hear all the time in my school, yeah? Commenting on people's body types, for example, is so common and I hate it. I will never do it, seriously, yeah. No, so I, all I want, you know, I want everyone to feel comfortable and yeah, this is what I'm trying to do. And also like your project on photographing tattooed girls in Japan, I think like it's such an amazing thing like to show more people who are tattooed, especially like in Japan where it's like taboo to do yeah. or to have them as a woman, especially. So yeah. <laughs> really cool that you should like show people are different like everybody is like different shape different like yeah. looks <laughs> no I mean, i'm different and i'm i live my life just fine yes yeah people like to over dramatize things and no just be normal we're good yes we can figure it out yes we're all different but we're all the same kind of thing so yeah yeah, yeah. that's how i'm trying to live basically Oh, it's really cool. And um, are there any challenges, like major challenges you had to face, like on your career until now? Like, except, like, of course, the challenges of building your own brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what I still kind of deal with is not being taken seriously many times, be it photography or kimono, both. You know, when I meet someone, depends who it is, okay? So the, really, people react in different uh, ways. But what I really... Mm, it's, it's my least favorite thing in the world, let's say, is not being taken seriously. And it happens a lot, you know. There's a lot of paperwork that I had to do for um, my business, yes. Then, you know, I show up at an office and I say, yeah, I want to register this and this. And people are like, what? You? Kimono? What are you talking about? You? You being you? <laughs> well yes <laughs> so things like that they happen and they still happen actually so this is maybe the biggest difficulty yeah I think yeah and is it like because you're like a foreign woman in Japan or is it like your age because you're younger what do you think is the reason uh, why they don't I think it's time? everything all together <laughs> it's all of those things you know it's like a bomb it's this mix, you know, when they see it, it's like, wow, confusion. How do I deal with this person? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Somehow people, I'm not everyone, okay? It just happens quite a lot, but not everyone. Sometimes people are just normal. Yes, I'm talking to you. You reply. Yeah, we're good. I want this. Yes, we're doing this, right? But sometimes it's like, wow, mind blown, this person, this, this woman, this foreigner speaking to me in Japanese, saying she does kimono, what? So yeah, those situations happen. How do you because do of those? Just everything. What do I do? I mean, that's another thing. <laughs> I am very proud, let's say. I'm a very proud person, like, you know... I, yeah, I, I cannot deal with situations like that, you know, like you treat me seriously or we not talking at all. Yes. Yeah? So basically this is, I'm, I have no problems with being very blunt. Mm -hmm. You know how in Japan people go around, you know, the topic and, you know, I don't know, try to, it ends up being really passive aggressive, I feel, in Japan. Like, you're trying to sound nice, but in your mind, you're like, okay. But I have no problems just saying bluntly, like, talk to me normally, you know? Like, I'm here to do this, this, this. I need this done for my business. What is your problem? Yes, I'm here. I need to do this. So, yeah, I don't know. You have to stand your ground, I yeah. think. Especially if you're just, like, you know one person business and yeah that's it yeah stand yeah. your ground that's it yeah amazing yeah really important like setting your boundaries yes yes exactly that's very important on a more positive note like what was something you're really really proud of like that you've accomplished until now that you maybe thought i would never be able to do it 
like uh. <laughs> where are you most proud of of yourself yeah yeah i mean um that's also another thing that i get asked a lot and i have problems answering always because on one hand maybe i think that there is more i can do so it's kind of difficult to choose one thing now like maybe i don't think that i have achieved something yet yeah but i guess just one thing i guess switching from just my room in a in a, an apartment you know <laughs> um to having literally my own shop my own studio like literally my own i own it it's built on my land yes <laughs> so you know thinking about that and that switch in only what three years yeah three years and a little bit i think that's pretty big yeah i should give myself more credit you know yes that's incredible that, that one. yeah i should give myself more credit yeah Now, especially that you mentioned like you didn't want to have a boss who tells you anything and now you have your own like very own shop yeah yeah very own no, thing. no i'm the boss yeah. <laughs> yes i'm the one saying things no no i'm just me so <laughs> yeah one day maybe i'll have like staff who knows who knows maybe that's next yeah and now that you are your own boss i And you mentioned like having maybe stuff. Um, how do mm -hmm. you like? Do you plan on um, like? Is it your? How do you say put it? Like, is it your wish to, if possible, stay on your own because you feel more comfortable, mm -hmm. or is it like a dream to have a team of people working with you? Maybe to maybe give them the editing jobs, like, or do you want to keep doing it for you, like mm -hmm. yourself because you want to? very easy question only me <laughs> yes I want to do like how I'm doing it the way I want it done I yeah it's a common topic um, of conversation yeah if I say yeah I have so many things to do I have a backlog of shoots I need to prepare so many people say oh why don't you um, outsource editing no 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 absolutely I could not like leave it to someone else yeah it has to be done the way I find it good has you know it it has to look good to me I have to work on it and like final see the final effect and be like oh yeah this is good this is perfect yes yeah I I think I want to continue how I'm doing it but sometimes it's not possible so you know the more you do And in my case, last year, it's it's a fresh thing. I started doing bridal shoots. They are so difficult. Doing them by just, just by yourself, one person, is not possible. It's very, very, very hard. So I had to find an assistant. But she helps me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She comes only for bridal shoots. Otherwise, I deal with everything by myself. And so far, this is the best system <laughs> yeah i'm responsible for my own work you know i like that you know just being responsible for myself so yeah that's that's fairly clear for me yeah and um what is your current dream like is there still anything you have like mm -hmm. goal you want to accomplish in the next years Mm -hmm. that's also a question I get a lot and also I never know how to answer but hmm I don't know I mean I want my brand to be better bigger more out there like I want to be known not me as me yes I want my name to be known not my face or something like that yeah I want my brand to be known like people see let's say in kimono or they see my name like stasha matsumoto and they know oh this is that photographer this is that kimono stylist i know her work yeah so i want to work towards that um yeah there's always you know room to improve you know things so just bigger better more yeah i don't know um at the moment i do all types of kimono so 
I don't know what else I could do at this point, but I don't know, maybe practice more obitais for furisode or something. You know, in case of kimono, it's never ending work, literally. So, yeah, I guess that would be my dream for the nearest future. Just get my brand more out there. Mm. Yeah. No, oh, really cool. And it seems like you are already like happy how it is right now, you know, like only getting it bigger, like not changing at like too much. Yeah, I mean, if, if it works, then there's no need to <laughs> change or, yeah, do anything else because, you know, it's been working well. So, yeah, I just want to continue doing what I do and just be better, do more. Yes. Yeah get bigger yes that's my plan that's cool and like because you started your own business do you have like an advice for somebody who wants to start their own business like and you think back what do you wish you known before you started it uh-huh yes yes <laughs> um well first of all don't underestimate yourself Don't underestimate your skills, your time, the time that you spend studying or like practicing to be at the level that you are right now, because it's many years. And, you know, at the beginning, I wouldn't take those into account. Yeah, like, like I said before, you know, at first I had problems with just calling myself a photographer. Yeah. But it it also didn't happen just like that, yeah, like overnight, yeah. It's a few years of practicing, doing different things, figuring things out. And now I am at this level. I can take really good portraits. I can take, I don't know, landscape or something. So yes, I should have called myself a photographer from the very beginning, yes. And I would really just underestimate my, yeah, my time, my work, my quality, yes, thinking, no, I'm not good enough, I, I need more practice, yeah, it's not good, like, nobody will like it, but looking back at my work from, let's say, three years ago, I mean, obviously, there is a difference now and three years ago, but it's still good, yeah, so there's always this thought you know oh no it has to be perfect you have to be perfect it's good you're fine yeah but it's always mm, it's kind of difficult to see it at the beginning yes yeah? so definitely that would be my advice just don't underestimate yourself yeah you know if you have this idea that yes I want to do this I will quit my full-time job I will do this full-time if you think you can do it then obviously you have the I don't know you have the skill set to do it right so definitely that and something a little i don't know more boring but uh it's important it's very important uh it's very important to have a contract and write everything down even if it sounds silly even if it's a really small thing you need to protect your business from the very beginning. And it's not something that you learn at school because we don't have like business class, right? And I didn't also study like business or anything like that. Uh, but it's very important to just have rules, have boundaries and write them down and have people understand what is that you do, what your work is about. So that's very important. Have a contract. If anyone like will read or listen <laughs> and they look for and they are creative um they want to work in creative field and they are looking for advice that's my advice have a contract definitely and of course don't underestimate your work oh, yeah really really important such amazing advice thank you i think it will help a lot of people i hope i hope <laughs> i wish somebody told me you know that like have a contract write it down No matter how silly you think it may sound, there's no such thing as silly. You have to write it down, honestly. So <laughs> I wish. <laughs> But it also probably comes from experience, like experience something that you haven't even thought about. And then you're, I wish yeah. I put it in the contract. I didn't even think of this issue. 
Yes, yes, yes. A lot of things will come out. Yes, yes. But, you know, you need to have a frame, and the, yeah. the base at the beginning. Yeah. And things will expand as you go. Yeah, of course. You're right. Yeah, that happens. Like, do you have like an um, example what uh, maybe happened in your like, I wish I put it in. <laughs> yeah yeah very simple okay because there's many let's say things that I have in my contract at the moment but very simple and let's say that comes from the that kind of something that I figured out at the very beginning yes so do not put Instagram filters on photos I take wow. or any other filters or like any other editing yes that's a very very important thing for me or like other photographers or well just anyone who does let's say visual creative work yeah so yeah that that's a very simple example but you have to write it down you know you would think well nobody would do that yeah why would they put like a filter they will I assure you it's going to happen. And then you will think, oh, I wish I had said that. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, it's just one example. I don't know, maybe because I'm not uh, like a photographer, I would never, ever thought of it. But then now that you said it, it makes total sense because it's your yes. brand. You want to present it yes. like your way. Exactly. You want to have the control. Yes. It misrepresents my work. I don't want my name under a photo that is edited with like Instagram filter. Yes. I don't want other people to think, oh, this person edited it this way yeah. because I didn't. Yes. So it's very important. Yes. I think creative people would really understand what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But essentially it's protecting your work. Yes. Yeah. Really, really cool. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> And last question would be, what is your why? Why do you do what you do? Uh-huh. Um, well, very short answer, if you don't mind, but freedom. That's it. Yeah. Freedom, complete freedom. I have creative freedom. I have freedom when it comes to my working time or my schedule or just everything. I am free. I have total freedom. Yeah. And it's really it feels great okay <laughs> even yesterday I was thinking like if I just had to you know wake up every morning and just put on a suit for example and just get on the train and sit at a desk for 10 hours I couldn't do it no I couldn't do it you see and now I, I don't have to yes I'm I'm really happy I have total freedom yes I do work a lot because, again, if you're a one-person business, you have to take care of a lot of things. And a lot of them are boring, like accounting or scheduling, like organizing, cleaning. But it's for you. You're doing this for yourself only, yes? And that gives you freedom. Yeah, that's it. That's my why. This is why I do what I do. I mean, well, it gives me happiness, you know. I like what I do. I enjoy it a lot. I really do enjoy it. I am really happy doing what I'm doing, you know. I like doing kimono. I like choosing different pieces. I like dressing people in kimono. I like ma doing makeovers. Like, today we're doing hair like this. Today we're doing this style. And then, you know, take photos of them and... Yeah, I enjoy every part of what I'm doing, yeah. So, well, happiness is obvious, but yeah, freedom is next. Amazing. Thank you so much. I'm, yeah, <laughs> it was amazing hearing that. Ooh, great. Ending <laughs> on a positive note. <laughs> yes, I'm glad. It's not always, you know, it's not always all pink, you know, and great, but most of the time, yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Thank you so much.